Hey everyone, I am here in the U.S. Senate building with Senator Howley, who is such an amazing hero and legend and freedom fighter. And we are talking about some uh, fun topics today, some spicy topics. One of them is big tech censorship. And, um, I, you know, I almost have to get my America glasses on for this one because I feel like so much of our, so many of our freedoms, our First Amendment rights are being infringed upon in this big way tech censorship scam, I, uh, I just want to preface it by saying I had never really experienced this until a few weeks ago when a video of worship that took place in Minneapolis was censored by Instagram for harmful and abusive content. Then I started to notice as I kind of blew the whistle on that, so many of, of my other friends and influencers in, in the church world had experienced the same thing. And uh, then you kind of swooped in and, and you helped kind of give some context for it. And I know that this has been something you've been fighting for. So I, we would just love to hear from you. Um, yeah. Well, you bet, Sean. Unfortunately, your experience isn't unusual. I mean, that's the thing that's really sad here is that people of faith, uh, pro-life activists, and not even activists. I mean, just people who want to say, you right. know, like, I am pro-life and I want to share that. Maybe they want to share some content. People who say, I'm a believer. I want to share some worship videos. Right have been getting censored by Facebook, by Instagram, uh, by Twitter. I mean, you didn't Google, of course. And that's why I think that these guys, here's the problem. They've got all of this power. I mean, it just, and it's just a few people, just a few people control the almost narrative. all the social communication in this country. It all yeah. runs through them. And we've got to do something about that. And I think one of the things we have to do is we've got to give regular people more power. So if you get censored, you can actually hold them accountable. Other way to do that, I think, is really simple. We just give you the power to sue. Right now, and maybe some of you all know this, maybe some of you watching this have been censored. There's nothing you can do, as I'm sure you found out. You know, okay. if you say, I was censored, they say, you know, too bad. And if you say, well, I'm going to sue you, they're going to say, no, you can't because I'm protected by federal law, which is true. We need to change that. If they're going to censor people, they need to be held accountable. And I think that every American ought to have the right, if you get censored, you ought to have the right to go to court and say, I, I was discriminated against, and I'm going to sue you. How about I that? love that. I, I, I'm, let's go. That gets me fired up. So where are we at in that process right now and on the legislative end? So I've introduced a, a proposal that would do just that, and we've got a lot of support in the Senate, and I hope that we'll get support for it, and uh, we'll be able to get a vote on it. Uh, this is something you know that uh, uh, the president and others have talked about. I, I, this, to me, though, should not be a partisan issue. Because right. Who totally. wants censorship, A, B, right. who wants two or three or four people to control all of the social talk in this country? I mean, it's, it's basically like these guys sit, Facebook and, and Twitter, Google, and stuff. They, they sit at like the bridge. In order to cross the bridge, you got to go pay them. You know, so they control right. who goes, who right. comes, who goes, who comes. We need, we need to open that up. We need more competition. We need to give people the rights, users, the rights to say, you're discriminating against me. And if you do that... That will engender more competition, more choices, more options, and we need that too. Well, and I, and I feel like too, I mean, from a legislative end, I, I mean, I love what you guys are doing. But there's also this thing too that, you know, they, they are shaping the narrative. Yeah. And that's, that's what frustrates me is I'm like, okay, so you are going to, you know, all, we, all we've seen in America for the last several months is buildings burning and rioting and looting and all this stuff, which is happening. But... But the moment that we come out and say, hey, by the way, we're worshiping on the same street corner where George Floyd was killed. Hey, by the way, we're gathering the church. We actually have real re racial reconciliation happening. The moment we present another narrative that's actually happening, they push it down. Yeah, exactly. And to me, it's like it, they're controlling the storyline. And this is what I want to fight against because I'm like, for the future of our kids, they're, they're creating a story that you have to abide by as you that we're going to be passing down. To yeah, exactly. And the, and the story that they want to tell is in what terrible shape we are as a country, right. uh, that the foundations of the country are fundamentally warped and, and evil and structurally racist and fill in the blank, whatever the label is today. But right. basically that the United States is a failed experiment. We're living in a failed society, essentially. And that's why it's so depressing. 
and people, <laughs> but people want, they want to, they put they, these on. They, they know, exactly. <laughs> they want, Americans want to believe in our future. Totally. They want to believe in yeah, America. Yeah. And they want to, to again, believe right. in those things that we love together. And this is one of the right. things about big tech that just kills me is that they want to divide us ultimately. What's the kind of speech on big tech? It gets the most likes that, that their algorithms push up. It's the stuff that is hateful, totally. that is divisive. Totally. If you want to talk about how we love one another, how we serve one another, the things we believe in together, that stuff, for some mysterious reason, the algorithms, <laughs> oh, that just that, that gets shut down, that doesn't get any likes, that doesn't get... So they are, the way they structure their business is yeah. it's actually trying to divide us, and of course, they make money on that, right. and that's another big problem. Well, and you, you know, we're, we're hearing from somebody that sat you know, face-to-face with, you know, Zuckerberg and has had these discussions, but it seems to me like the tail is wagging the dog. Yeah. You know, like there's a small minority of people that are dominating the storyline for the nation because, I mean, although I do know that there's unrest and there's other things, I travel quite a bit across America and I see a lot of hope. Yeah. What would you, what would be your advice just lastly that you would tell people, like, how can they detach from that and find hope? Like, well, I think that, you know, don't, don't believe the narrative that big tech serves up to you, number one. Number two, just realize that everything that you see online in terms of the social media is being curated. You know, it's being picked for you by big tech to serve their interests, including, by the way, their money-making interests. I mean, that's just part of it. That they, they want to make a buck. They want to make a lot of bucks. And so that's one of the reasons that they're pushing forward all of this hateful right. stuff is because it sells and they make money right. on it. So your news feed, you know, they are choosing what goes in there for you. So I think part of that is, is we need to use the tools, use right. the platforms to get out there the message of truth right. and hope right. and love, but also realize that we're not going to become captive to that. And, right. and, you know, here in the United States Senate, I think we've got to do our job. We have got to hold these people accountable. We've yeah. got to end their special deals with government that they get right now. And we've got to give Americans who are using those tools, those platforms, the ability to stand up and claim their rights, including the ability to sue. That's so good. Okay, lastly, what about TikTok? Oh, TikTok. <laughs> TikTok is, is very fun, very clever. The only problem with TikTok is it's owned by a Chinese company that is in bed with the Chinese Communist Party. So that's the only problem. Everything you put on TikTok, just realize, is going straight, basically, to the Chinese Communist Party, and including, including, I'm not making this up, including your keystrokes, your contact list, your search history. You might say, oh, I turned TikTok off. I have it closed. doesn't Runs in the background all the time. Checks for the patient. Sends Guys. that to Beijing. That's the Are problem. Are you hearing that. this? That's the problem. So what we need to do is, is that we actually need to stop TikTok from collecting all that information. Yeah. We need to stop it from sending it to China. If they won't do that, then we need to force the Chinese parent company to sell TikTok. Uh, just delete that app off your phone <laughs> right now. Like, well, you what the that. heck? Like, okay, woo! I didn't even know all this, but yeah, just delete that. Stay on here. We'll give you guys good. Content.